In this video, we're going to get lesson 8.4, which is diving deeper into logarithms. We're going to look at evaluating them, changing the base more, and we're going to look at solving them with exponential equations. So this video really has two parts. It's the evaluating and the solving for it. So let's start with part one. Now, part one, we're going to evaluate logs by hand, and that's like the good old days, no calculator type of thing. So in this part, it's really, really, really important that you know work must be shown. And to go into, well, what type of work or how do I show my work for this is let's think about what we know about logs so far. We learned in previous lessons that if you are adding two logs together, you merge them by multiplication. Or if you are subtracting two logs, you merge them by dividing the terms together. Or if you have a coefficient of two logs, you create an exponent, you create a power. These were our properties of logarithms from a previous lesson. This is how we're going to evaluate logs by hand. And what we're going to do is we are going to use these operations. So using multiplication, division, or powers we are going to create the number. And so to see what that means, let's kind of think of it an example. So create the number. All right. So given the value of log base, sorry, log of two, log of four, log of 12, I want to find log of eight. So using multiplication, using division or using exponents somehow create the number eight from two four and or twelve i have to use multiplication division or powers so i really have to rewrite the number eight and so i'm gonna look at the number eight and go you know what i can rewrite it with multiplication two times four i'm using multiplication is the same as eight. I mean, those two are the exact same. They're equal to each other. So I have log of eight, but I'm gonna write eight as two times four. Didn't change the problem, just changed the way it looked. And since I'm multiplying, we learn in 8.3 that you merge two logarithms together by multiplication when you are adding. So I am going to split these apart by, and I'll keep the colors, by adding log base, sorry, log of two and log of four. So log of two, we are told is 0 0.3010. And log of four, we are told is 0 0.6021. If I add those two numbers together, 0.9031. And that is my answer. So I'm going to use multiplication, division, or exponents and create the given number that I have. And in this case, it was the number eight. So if I look at the next one, how can I create three? So I don't want to leave three as is. I want to somehow create three using multiplication, division, or exponents with two, four, and 12. Well, two times four is eight, four times 12, too big. What if I divide? What if I take a set of three? What if I rewrite three as 12 divided by four? They're the same number. So instead of saying log of three, I'm gonna say log of 12 divided by four. Same thing equivalent. And so since I'm dividing, we merge with division when we are subtracting two logs. So I have log of 12 minus log of four. That's 1.079, it says, minus 0 0.6021. When I subtract those, 0 0.4769. And that is the answer. So using multiplication, division, or exponents, I am trying to 
create the same number. So if I look at log 16 using multiplication, division, or powers, how can I create 16 from 2, 4, and 12? Now, I'm a little bit different. It's interesting is, as a teacher, I think powers. I mean, I look at 16, and I know 16 is a perfect square. It's four squared. And those two are the exact same number. I didn't change the problem. I just rewrote it. And that allows me to use my power rule. I'm going to take my exponent of 2 and go down. So I could say 2 times the log of 4. And I have two parentheses. Log of 4 is 0 0.6021. So I get 1.2042. And that is the answer. Now, that's me. And what's interesting is that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is the way that a lot of students see it this way. And it's not a way that I normally see it for it. They see it as an addition. And so I want to go back to it is if what if I rewrite and I'll just do it to the side? But using multiplication, division, or powers, can't I say log of 4 times 4? That's the same thing as 4 squared. And since I am multiplying, that means I'm adding my two logs. So log of 4 plus log of 4. So that'd be 0 0.6021 plus 0 0.6021, which is the same thing. Now, I want you to look at the side by side. Notice they're equivalent. 4 squared is 4 times 4. I'm adding a log of 4. I'm adding another log of 4. I have two log of 4s. When you add the same number, it's like multiplying by 2. So the steps are the exact same. A lot of students see it as the 4 times 4. I see it as a power. And it doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer. Last one is log of 24. Multiplication, division, or powers. Well, I look at log of 24. And I think of 24 as being 2 times 12. Same exact value. So I have log of 2 plus, as I'm multiplying, plus log of 12. The log of 2 is 0 0.3010. Log of 12 is 1.079. If I add those together, I get 1.38. And there is your four answers. That's how you do it by hand. That's where your work must be shown. If I'm giving you approximations on them, you're going to use those based off of multiplication, division, or powers for it. And notice I never changed the problem. It is 2 times 4. You know, 12 divided by 4 is 3. 16 is 4 times 4. 24 is 2 times 12. They are the exact same problems, or just find a way to rewrite them. So next part, evaluating your logs using your calculator. Now, this is not the good old days. Um, this is actually using your calculator for it. So I'm going to just pull up my calculator screen on it. And so we have, and I'll just make it a little bit bigger so you can kind of see it first. We're going to type it in, we're going to round to four decimal places, it says. So the log button is right next to number seven. And I'm just going to type in log of 57.3. I'll close parentheses. Hit enter. Four decimal places I want to round to, which means I'm going to look at the fifth. So 1.75815. The five would round that one up to a two. Now, right now, you don't know what that means, but that's what your calculator is telling you. We'll come to what it means after we're done doing all of them. Log of 4 to the 5th, I'm going to do log of 4 to the 5th power divided by 9 squared. That is 1.10181, round to 4 places. That 1 does not change that 8 at all. Log of 100. Again, you don't know what the 1.1018 means, but let's just see. Maybe these last two might help us. Log of 100. It's 2. There's no need to round for that one. 
All right, so in this case, log one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. I'm gonna hit enter. It's nine. No rounding is needed on that one. So this is how we are going to do it by using the calculator. Now the question is, what do these numbers mean? Well, I don't want to start with five and six. I'm going to start with seven and eight. You know, this has two zeros. I mean, 100 is 10 squared. Now, I mean, that's 100. If I have nine zeros, I mean, that would be 10 to the ninth. So I wonder, if I were to do 10, to the 1.7582 power. What if I were just to follow that same exact rule? If I were to do 10 to the 1.7582 power, and I hit enter, 57.306. So 57.3, well, look at that. It's that. So what? logs do is they give us the power of 10 when you're using the calculator for it. It's telling you 10 to that power give you the number. So if I wanted to do let's say log of 210. If I were to look at that, that 2.3222, that is the power of 10 that would give me 210. So that's what your calculators are really telling you. That's how you plug it in your calculator, the log button's next to the seven. But the problem, the reason why we do this is because your calculator, I'll make a note here, is base 10. That's why it's 10 to the second power, 10 to the ninth, or 10 here, is your calculator's default base is 10. That's our number system. So I can't type in log base five of 311 in my calculator. So we use this idea called the change of base. It allows us to type in our calculator. Now the change of base formula says, okay, I can't type this in if it's not 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the base. And you're going to use this number, the N on top, and you're gonna use the base on the bottom with their own logs. So it looks like this. I kind of look at the formula is I'm going to write this as log of 311 divided by log of 5. So what happens is the 311, visually the bigger number, not numerically, but visually the bigger number goes on top. The base, that 5, goes on the bottom. That would allow me now to type it in my calculator. Now, when you type in your calculator, you need to be a little careful with it. When I type in log of 311, I have to close the parentheses before I hit the division, log of five. And that's going to give me 3.56633, round of four places. So we're going to give it that three, it doesn't change it. There it is. Now you could also use alpha y equals the fraction feature. And you can type it the way it is written on your paper. And notice in that case, I don't need to have the parentheses closed. They'll close themselves. So log 41, base is 2. So I'm going to do log 41. And I'm going to divide by log of two. So log of the visually bigger number divided by the log of the base. So I have log 41, close the parentheses, divided by log of two. And in this case, 5.35755. Five is going to round this one up to a six on it. So log 
base 440 is going to be log of the number, which is 40, divided by log of the base. So log, I'm going to do alpha y equals, alpha y equals log 40 on top, log 4 on the bottom, and that is 2.66096. Run around to four places. Well, that's 6 and round that 9 up to a 10. So there we go. That's the change of base formula. It allows you to type it in your calculator. No issues for it along those lines. Uh, maybe think of the, we'll make it full screen, um, base as the bottom. And then N, the number, as the numerator. So when you do your change of base, the number goes in the numerator, the base goes in the bottom. Maybe that alliteration will help you with the change of base formula, remembering which one goes where. Now, before we go into the next part, um, we are solving exponential equations with these. These are just the first part. It, it's evaluating and using change of base on it. And so we're getting a little bit more in depth in how logarithms are used to find powers. The next part deals with solving exponential equations. We'll stop this video here and start the next video at that part.